success stories in medicine are usually about people with terminal cancer who, despite the odds, get on an amazing new trial and are cured forever. My story isn't like that. I'm 28 and I have advanced stage cystic fibrosis. I'm working my hardest to stave off lung transplant, but it's getting harder as I approach the average CF life expectancy. My story is not about happy endings or miracle cures. It's about something bigger and more transformative. It's about hope for healing our healthcare system through connectivity and collaboration. Two years ago, my lungs revolted. Their ammunition was blood and they were tireless. A life-threatening CF complication, lung bleeds occur when a blood vessel bursts, causing blood to surge up your airway, making you feel like you're drowning and compelling you to cough. As you lower your hands, the splattering of blood on your palms serves as the most damning evidence in the world. Bright red, gutterly shocking, like the devil appearing and coming from within. The conventional treatment for lung bleeds is to stop aerosolized medications for 24 hours to let the blood vessels heal. Stop the treatments I do for over three hours daily to control the chronic infections ravaging my lungs. You get the predicament, right? The treatment for this complication is to stop the very medications I depend on to control CF. And that's why, on day five of my lungs revolt, with no end in sight, I reluctantly agreed to stop my daily treatments at my doctor's urging. It turned out my lungs were not ready to concede, so it was no surprise that by day six, a nasty lung infection was brewing due to the halted treatments. Perfect timing for my entire healthcare team to jet off to a CF conference across the country. Sprawled on my couch, it was seeming like my fate for the hospital for weeks of IV antibiotics was sealed. And that's when an email from my doctor appeared in my inbox. Emily, I'm boarding my flight and losing internet. And a second later, Emily, I just landed and I can pick up where Dr. H left off, that one from the nurse practitioner. And then another, Emily, I've been fully briefed. You can name a time to be seen, or we can keep coordinating by email. Let me know what works best for you. That one from the CF fellow at clinic. And then the clincher, a note from my doctor that he got in-flight internet to keep in touch. That, my friends, is how it should be. And yet, it didn't end there. In a different sphere of the interwebs, I was receiving another outpouring of care this time from a group of people whose curriculum vitae contains real-life experience, my CF compatriots. They shared wisdom and the kind of compassion that can only come from people living and breathing with this disease, just like me. But it wasn't just support. They told me about positional triggers to avoid and supplements to strengthen my blood vessels, information that I took back to my healthcare team who was eager to hear it. Imagine that. Pooling the expertise of lifetime patients and their doctors, crowdsourcing at its best, and vetting it with my team virtually and within hours. That is what healthcare should be. It should work that cohesively, be that smart, that collaborative, that genuinely caring. So there I was, sick as a dog, closely monitoring my symptoms for the breaking point for hospital admission. But as sick and broken as my body felt, my soul felt whole. And that's when I realized I'm one of the lucky ones with care that's committed, collaborative, and, well, profoundly caring. But you see, that's precisely the problem. This care should be the rule, not the exception. I know I'm lucky because it wasn't always this way. There are thousands of people whose voices are silenced, whose bodies are reduced to inanimate recipients of this thing they call care. They are living, breathing, sentient human beings, and they deserve better. We deserve better. We all deserve the care I got from my providers 30,000 miles up in the air and from my CF friends 3,000 miles across the country. We deserve it, and we need it, because something amazing happens when our healthcare teams treat us as the integral partners that we are. It produces better outcomes and higher quality care. Two years ago, it was participatory medicine that allowed me to avoid a hospital stay. And today, it's that same care that has helped keep me, a patient with advanced stage CF, hospital-free for over three years and counting. I am a living, breathing example of participatory medicine, 
I'm proof that it works, and I'm here urging you to give it a try. Let's get to a place where I'm not lucky anymore, where patients' desire to participate in care is not only accepted but encouraged, where our care nurtures our soul, respects our personhood, and makes us feel whole again. Because the truth is, not all stories in medicine can have happy endings, but it's not really the ending that makes a story a success. It's each chapter, each page, each sentence, each pause. So I'd like to propose a new definition for success in medicine. What if we change the goal from happily ever after to we're a force when we work together? Thank you.